JBN to keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi, guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Trough to bring island-wide rainfall. Our trough is expected to bring showers to most parishes across the island on Sunday. According to the Med Service of Jamaica, the weather system is expected to remain across the country for the next few days, bringing with it periods of rainfall. Showers and isolated thunderstorms are expected mainly across eastern and south-central parishes, while it will be windy across northern parishes. On Monday, Jamaicans are to expect isolated morning showers across northeastern parishes. Afternoon and evening showers and isolated thunderstorms are expected across sections of southern and northeastern parishes. Five gunmen robbed gas station in St. Anne. Mass gunmen allegedly invaded a gas station in Golden Grove, sent on Saturday night, robbing workers of more than half a million dollars in cash. Shots were fired during the incident, but there were no reports of any injuries, the police said. Reports received indicate that around 8.15 p.m., five masked men, all armed with guns, alighted from a white Toyota Probox motor car and entered the establishment. The gunmen reportedly robbed the cashier and other workers of $550,000 cash, then robbed the 63-year-old watchman of his cell phone, KRN, and the driver's license. The men were leaving, reportedly fired several shots at a man, driving a white 1996 Toyota Costa bus. The man escaped injuries, but the bus was reportedly damaged. The gunman escaped in the Pro Box motor car, the police said. Man shot and killed while doing construction work in Old Arbor. A man was shot dead while doing construction work at a house on Panton Lane in Old Arbor, St. Catherine, on Saturday afternoon. The deceased has been identified as 21-year-old Tyrone Roberts, otherwise called Gungaman, from Marley Acres in Old Arbor. Reports received indicate that around 3 p.m., Roberts was doing construction work when residents heard loud explosions. Shortly after, they reportedly saw Roberts running along the roadway before collapsing and falling to the ground. Residents summoned the police who found Roberts lying on the ground with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. He was assisted to the Spanish Horn Hospital but was pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the killing, the police said. Two shot, one fatally, at a bar party in Westmoreland. One man was shot dead and another injured during a shooting at a party in Burns Savannah in Frome, Westmoreland, on Saturday morning. The dead man has been identified as 36-year-old Sheldon Shakes, a farmer from Townhead District in Burns Savannah. The injured man is a 32-year-old Mason. Reports of that around 12.45 a.m., both men were guests at a sports bar and gaming lounge where a party was being held when patrons heard several old explosions sounding like gunshots. When the shooting subsided, the patrons found Shakes suffering from gunshot wounds to the left side of his chest and the now-injured man was shot in his lower left arm. Party goers assisted both men to the St. Lamar Public General Hospital where Shakes died while undergoing treatment. The other man was treated and later released. No motive has yet been established for the shooting, the police said. Body believed to be that of homeless man found with gunshot wounds in Spanish Town. The body of a man was found with gunshot wounds and one of his eyes missing at Toss Meadows in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Saturday morning. The deceased, who is still not officially identified, is believed to be a homeless man known as Canadian. Reports indicate that around 11.40 a.m., residents stumbled upon the body and alerted the police. On arrival, lawmen saw the body lying on its back in bushes. The left eye was missing and it had a gunshot wound to the head. The body is of a dark complexion, 5 feet 7 inches long, unkempt hair, and appeared to be in its 50s. It was cut in a black shirt with bleed spots, blue jeans shorts, black socks, black shoes, white, black and red cross bag, and had a brown bag on its back. 45 rounds of ammunition seized in separate incidents. A total of 19 9mm and 612 gauge cartridges were seized by the St. Catherine North Police during an operation on Manchester Street in Spanish Town on Saturday. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that about 4.30 p.m., lawmen in the area when the premises were searched. During the search, the ammunition was found in plastic bags in the bathroom. The police also reported the seizure of 24 assorted rounds of ammunition during an operation 
in the Burger Gully community, Mountain View, Kingston 2, also on Saturday. The police indicate that about 3.20 p.m., a team was in the area when a premises was searched. During the search, three 5.56 mm rounds, 2.38 special rounds, and 19 45 rounds of ammunition were seized. No arrest was made concerning either seizure. Investigations continue. Vibes Cartel Real Trial Hearing in Court of Appeal set for June 10. The Court of Appeal will start hearing arguments on June 10 to determine whether Vibes Cartel and the three other men who were charged for Clive Lizard Williams' murder should be retried. Justice Marvel MacDonald Bishop, in issuing the ruling on Friday, ordered that the appellants file and serve skeleton submissions with authorities on or before May 6, while the respondents were given on or before May 31 to do the same. The hearing is expected to last for five days. On March 14, Jamaica's final appellate court, the United Kingdom-based Privy Council, questioned by the convictions of cartel, whose given name is Adija Palmer, Sean Sean Storm Campbell, Kaharia Jones, and Andre St. John. They were convicted in 2014 for Williams' murder in 2011. Cartel and the others were sentenced to life imprisonment. However, the Privy Council said in its judgment that the men's convictions should be quashed on the grounds of jury misconduct. The court ruled that the trial judge should have dismissed a tainted juror, Livingston Kane, who was later found guilty of accepting a bribe to try to influence other jurors in the case. Cartel and his co-accused have denied an involvement in the killing of Williams. Cashier who allegedly disappeared with $900,000 charge. A woman who is accused of making off with $900,000 she received at work to deposit in the establishment's bank account has been charged with Lawrence as a servant. She has been identified as 29-year-old Christina Lewis, otherwise called Tanya, of New Building District, Nain, Westmoreland. She initially gave her name as Tanya Lewis and was featured on the JCF Wanted Wednesday campaign. According to the police, the accused was employed as a cashier at a business establishment in the parish when she was given over $900,000 to deposit into an account. It is alleged that Lewis did not make the deposit and failed to hand over the cash to her employer. The police said she was contacted on several occasions. However, all checks made were futile. Lewis turned herself in after being featured on the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Wanted Wednesday campaign last week. She is scheduled to appear before the Savlamar Parish Court on Tuesday, April 23. A government donates $20 million to athletes who qualify for Paris Games. Sport Minister Olivia Grange announced that the government has given $20 million to support athletes who have qualified to present Jamaica at the Olympic Games in Paris this summer. Grange said that this funding will be directly disbursed to each athlete's account to aid them in their preparations for the Paris Games. We have the account details of each athlete and the funds will be directly transferred to their accounts, giving them autonomy over their finances, she said. We're looking at approximately $20 million. Every single athlete who qualifies for the Olympics will get a weekly stipend for 18 weeks leading up to the Olympic Games in Paris. You know that a lot of athletes don't have it, and they don't have to bear it all, and they struggle to train and to qualify for the Olympics. They have to make sure that they eat well. They have to make sure that they don't have the stress of how am I going to get here and how am I going to get there? Grant says the athletes will be covered by the government's insurance plan, ensuring access to health care in case of injuries. They're all going to be in the athlete insurance plan, symptoms of mental health and physio and all of that. That will be covered. And if they go overseas and have health issues, that will also be covered. So that has taken the burden off them, she said. Jamaica Olympic Association, JOA President Christopher Samudo, praised the government's support for the athletes' Olympic preparations. Jamaica Olympic Association, JOA President Christopher Samudo, praised the government's support for the athletes' Olympic preparations. The JOA is in the business of enabling and empowering our sportsmen and women, and therefore the government's announcement of monetary support in assisting athletes to prepare for Olympic Games is very welcome news that underscores the JOA's mandate of enabling the abled and inspiring aspirations, Samuda said. He emphasized the importance of recognizing athletes' contributions to Jamaica's global image. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.